Amen. This is Pastor Joshua Kenny Greenwood of the Empowerment Center Church. I was just walking through the forest. I'm actually walking through the forest right now as we speak. And I was walking along. I saw the Lord and the Spirit. And he was communicating something to me, something very significant, something so significant that it was important enough for me to uh, stop praying and share it with you like this. I was walking along, and I began to ask the Lord in faith questions in regards to what he's commanded me to do and, you know, where we go from here and, and what is, you know, how, how in the world is he going to rescue? <laughs> and I began to think of things that I can do when I recall exactly what happened. I began... To recall things in my mind, I was thinking of, of things I can do that would be deserving of in righteousness to rescue me. And he, he corrected me as a friend. And he shared with me that as a friend, he loves me like a friend when he says, <clears throat> no greater love has anyone than this, than a person that lays down their life for their friends. Well, in that, that's exactly what he was showing me. He was showing me that <clears throat> he intends on manifesting his word and fulfilling his promise, not because of anything that I can do on my own or of my own volition or own merit, but because he's my friend. He loves me so much that he would do this for me. Amen. So. As he's showing me this and as he's telling me that he is planning on doing this because he's my friend, he's going to do it. He appears to me in the spirit as I'm walking along in the forest. He appears to me as a human as he's speaking this to me. But in the spirit, in, in the gift of discernment that he's given through the Holy Spirit, I discern that was not his true form. That he was appearing to me as a human, but he was appearing to me that way because that way it was comfortable for me to contextually understand and relate to what he was saying. And it was a deep and intimate, meaningful thing, but it was the outside. It wasn't the true image. And as a friend, I accept him. And desire to see his true image. To which when I asked this in my spirit. He said that it was beyond my understanding. It was more than I can fathom. And so I asked the Lord. Because the scripture says in the word Jesus says. You cannot. You can be like your master, but you can never be your master. <clears throat> now, when the Lord says, I can be like, you could be like your master, but you cannot be him. He's my friend. So as my friend, the spirit that is the Lord, this powerful spirit that I see that doesn't take the form of a man. I begin to see him for what he truly is, and I ask him to change my being because his word says that I can be like him. It didn't say I can be him, but it did say that I can be like him. So I have the permission in the name of Jesus to ask the Lord to transform my very being, my very being, so that I can fathom. He told me I couldn't fathom. He didn't say I couldn't ask. So I asked that question and the Holy Spirit began to show me through time the manifestation of Jesus in human form. And that he had to take that form through a process that our own scientists, when they debate a, a virgin birth, <clears throat> they don't debate this within the animal kingdom. They call it Parthian Genesis. 
And scientists, they, they have the actual word that describes the phenomena of virgin birth that take place in captivity or in the wild. For the very last of their species to an animal that is a female that's been left in captivity for a great time, they can have that. So Jesus manifests as a human being. The Lord himself manifests. Because when he said you were made in his image, it, we didn't receive it and we didn't get the contextual understanding of what that meant when he appeared on Mount Sinai in the form of clouds and thunder or his voice was trumpeting or fire. So God says you're made in his image. So in his image, that electricity that lightning, it's inside of you. That's a part of you. The very lightning that comes right out of the clouds, is that not also the electric impulses that he has placed inside of your very being? God said you were made in his image, but we never bothered to ask which image he was talking about. So, he appears in the form of lightning. He appears as a sound, as a literal trumpet blast. But yet the very sound that's inside of you, the very heartbeat that you have, and the very sound waves that are generated, even when a person, scientists have proven that even when a person is speaking with their own inner monologue, okay, so you're speaking in your mind, you're not saying anything, you're actually speaking, your throat and your larynx are actually making movements. So in the spirit, you're still making sound. And that sound is visibly heard because in First Samuel, in the first chapter, Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, said that she prayed in the spirit and the Lord heard her prayer. But she prayed with her lips moving, but nothing was coming out. So the very essence, the power, the sound wave that's inside of us, the, the very makeup of God, when he speaks in that way, he has wrapped up inside of us. But see, we didn't get that. We didn't get it. And so he came in the form of a way we would understand. Jesus. He came in the form. And he shows us something perfect, a transfiguration. Skin and clothes made like lightning that Peter references in his letter long after Jesus has died. He makes it the focal point of his letter. When he writes in the book of Peter, and he describes how he witnessed the Lord transfigured on the mountain in his glory. It says you cannot be your master, but you can be like him. You can be like him. So I desire, Lord, to be more like you. And you ask that in your heart, and you mean it in love. Because you want to get closer to your friend. And you know that when he gives you favor, it's not because you deserved it or you earned it. He does that because he loves you, because you're his friend. So quit trying to earn God's love and just love him back. And you know you're going to love him by showing others mercy and acknowledging the Lord. This is a powerful word. This is really a truly powerful word. This gives you depth and understanding as to the eternal nature of what God has already placed inside of you. I pray that each of you receive this and it helps you better understand the spirit of the Lord, the awesome and powerful spirit of the Lord, that you love him enough to accept him in a form that doesn't look just human, but that you truly accept him, accept him, accept him, accept him. I pray you receive this in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you for listening to this. I'm going to go back to talking with the Lord. Praise Jesus.